Hickok 45 here, and you know me, I hate pumpkins. <laughs> A whole magazine worth of hate. Oh, I have another one though for this M&P 2.0 compact. I do like to smoke some There we go. <laughs> oh, there's one hiding. Look at him on top of the tree. Oh, ah, broke him up. <laughs> Bowling. Oh man, I love to bowl. I love to shoot trees. I love to shoot pumpkins. I just like to shoot. Did you know that? And uh, this is a pretty cool gun. So we're glad you all stopped by and uh, let you know what we think about it. Okay, we've done the M&P 2.0. This is the same gun, just a little smaller. It's almost a chapter two, but since it is the compact, uh, we're gonna shoot it and do a lot of, uh, do some comparison with the target. This gun uh, has targeted the Glock 19, as you all know that. And uh, we'll see what we think about it. Okay, we'll pass it along to you. Just give you our honest opinion of it and uh, shoot it some more uh pretty nice shoot. a little bit cleaner on the firearm and that sort of thing completely encapsuled uh so like i say we're going to shoot it we're going to compare a little bit because uh this is about the same size as the glock 19 and it is an alternative another alternative for the fabulously famous uh glock 19. All right, whether you like Glocks or you hate Glocks, go ahead and admit it. You know, it is the most, uh, one of the most popular carry pistols, you know, on the planet. Uh, it, uh, that doesn't change just because you hate them. And so be happy if you hate Glocks that there are people making firearms in the same category now, same size generally, and, uh, and, and some quality firearms, which this is one. So that's that's good. That's a good thing. So we'll see what we think of the of the difference. They're they are about the same size, and I'll I'll hold them up against each other here. Uh, they're about the same length. They're about the same height. There's just virtually no difference. The M and P compact is about a four inch barrel. It's got a little more sight radius because the rear sight. And I'll show you. It sits back a little further, so you get just a tad bit more sight radius. But you know nothing really to write home about. So. You get in size about the same. Biggest difference, I think, in size is uh, the thickness. It's not dramatic, but the uh, M&P still is a little thicker than the Glock, Glock 19. Okay, let me get my calipers out here. You know, I'm always being a caliper freak. Well, I'm a freak in a lot of ways, but we're clear on both of us. But uh, so let me get it on the slide first and just uh, a little comparison. Because really, people want to know this. I mean, a lot of people like the M&Ps, including me. And, uh, you know, they're looking for an alternative to Glock. So in terms of the slide, if you can see, so, you know, a little, little gap there. So the M&P is thicker on the slide. Now, if we grab the entire frame here, you know, I typically don't, I don't get my batteries dead on this thing. I don't even get into the measurements. My, When I do this for my own self, I just... Uh, I just like to see the difference. I don't care what the numbers are, to tell you the truth. There you go. So you see it's still a little thicker even on the slide, not much, or on the frame. So not a lot of difference uh, uh, when the frame takes into account, but the slide is thicker. And that's why when I weigh them, I get, uh, I see some weights listed on the M&P that don't make a lot of sense to me uh, all over the place. I've even seen people say they're both 24 ounces. I get 24 ounces on the Glock in an unloaded magazine. And with the M&P, John and I weighed them over and over before the video, I get uh, a pound 11 ounces. I get 27 ounces essentially. Okay, so it, there's a little bit, it'll you know go into an eighth of an ounce over 24 on the Glock and everything. So it's at least by my weighing and my measurements, uh, almost three ounces difference, about two and a half at least, okay? Okay, so it's from two and a half to three ounces heavier. So that's not a lot, but it is a little bit heavier, just, just for your information, okay? Uh, I don't know if part of that could be the fact that I have the large grip uh, on mine, or it's not mine, it'll be, it'll be one of you, one of yours, uh, when it gets to the e-gunner auction. 
uh, but I put the, the large grip and I typically don't do that with guns that I'm just going to have for a week or two. I'll just, cause I can, I can, I can adapt you know, for the most part, you know, when you're six, eight, you learn to adapt to the world, <laughs> even firearms. And, you know, I've, I've shot, uh, all kinds of little guns. And, and that's one of the things I like to, to do and I have uh, worked on over the many years of shooting is try to learn to shoot like a Glock 26 or just small compact pistols as well as I can, because it, boy, they're great for carry. Uh, but the thing about one of the negatives about the pistol is the fact that and i think we talked about this with the standard size version of this it, it's got a pretty nice trigger but it breaks further back than i like okay it breaks further back that's that's the biggest difference i notice so i pick that up and shoot it and pick this up and shoot it uh and so especially when it came because it had i think the medium back strap on it so i thought well on this this time i'm going to go ahead and put the the large back strap and see how that helps and it does help some it's it's uh, it's not quite as bad it still breaks a little further rearward than I like, uh, and it makes it, and you got like a golf ball in your hand because it is pretty big. But uh, I don't know, it's, it's not too bad. You get used to that. I, I could get used to it, but it still breaks a little further back than I like. Just not quite as bad as when it came, all right? I, coincidentally, today, I think this morning, somebody posted, I think it was on the, the first video we did with the 2.0, and made the comment that uh, there's an easy fix for changing where that trigger breaks now i didn't answer him i, I probably should uh and say well what is that fix because uh if there is a, an easy way to change that that that's pretty cool because to me that's one of the and speaking of positives and negatives and that's kind of what we do we don't bash and overly praise either either direction because i kind of like these firearms these m ps uh but one of the negatives is is that trigger and where it breaks okay and uh the other negative again is a little heavier but it's not dramatically heavier. If you like this gun over, over the Glock or any of the other you know, Glock 19 size firearms that are out now, and there's several, then the weight probably isn't going to uh, you know, turn you off and, and take you somewhere else, I don't think. Some of the positives of it, uh, it, it, I think it shoots well. The sights are clear, sights are good. And I love that texture. I probably pointed that out in the other video. I should have watched the other video see what I, so I don't repeat myself. I'll put a link to it because I went into some of the changes in the, the 2.0 versus the earlier M&Ps in that video. And I won't go into all that as much. I want to mainly just give you our impressions and then compare here a little bit. Um, but the grip texture, I like. I like. A lot of people think it's a little too rough, I think. And it, it hurts their hands. My skin... Now, I'm a very sensitive soul. You can offend me so easily and make me cry. You really can. But my skin, for some reason, is not, is not as sensitive as some people's. Because a lot of tough people, I know, they'll pick up a gun like this and it'll bother them. Like John doesn't like, uh, he's tougher than I am, but he doesn't like his uh, really rough texture. He definitely doesn't like sandpaper, like talon grips and that kind of thing, and, and thinks it's a little too rough, you know, maybe for him. Uh, but I love it, it's perfect. So for a sensitive human being, my hands, I guess, are just rough, and I need it, you know. I mean, it could be even more aggressive for me. I'll tell you, when you grab that thing, and uh, it, it locks in, and, and I love it. Uh, I, again, I could learn to really like this pistol, and uh, if, you know, I, I could carry it and be perfectly happy. Feels pretty good. So, again, trying to give you some negatives and positives, and uh, maybe even some neutral observations. What would that be? I don't know, but it's a, it's a cool gun. You got, uh, your, I think your reversible mag release. You got your uh, amb ambi ambidextrous uh, slide lock, not necessarily slide release because now it'll release, a, I hate to release these like this, but I'm, I'm gonna do it, okay? If you're a lefty, you're gonna have a hard time. It's, yeah, I, did, I just can't get, I can't get it down, okay? And it's a new gun. Whereas with the Glock, uh, this is a Gen 5, by the way. Uh, you know, it's got the ambi slide release, of course. You can release it on the right, with the right hand, or on, or on the left, okay? So if you're a lefty, you'll like this a little bit better. So it's basically an ambidextrous slide lock, not an ambidextrous slide release, in my opinion, okay? Uh, so that might be a negative for you, don't know. Uh, it's Smith & Wesson M&P. I think they've still got the lifetime warranty, don't they? So they're pretty cool guns. And uh, we have fired hollow points. I didn't bring any hollow points out today, did I? But we all know. I think we did in the other video. And the, 
there's nothing that new about these. These have been around a while, these M&Ps. They're, they're pretty good guns. They're very popular. And uh, I know they're pretty popular in the competition uh, cir circuit and everything. Let's shoot this target over here a little bit. What did I put in there? I've got those, uh, yeah, Syntex in there, I think. Let's see if they'll hit a, uh, they're really good for steel. I'm not even shooting steel. I'll tell you what, let's shoot the uh, uh, shootsomesteel.com uh, 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 tree here. We appreciate them passing that on to us. Huh. <laughs> nice. Uh, I've got that one set better. I don't know if you noticed. I've got it balanced and level, or the, the bottom, the base of it, and everything, so it actually works better going in both directions. For years, the other one worked better going to the right than the left and all that sort of thing. So anyway, I got more smarter on that one. So anyway, we appreciate uh, Shoot Some Steel providing that. That was the Syntec, I think. And this, yeah, these are 124 grain full metal jacket. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Cowboys. Two liter. <laughs> hit the ground and bled. Let's hit a plate or two over there. Mm. Yeah, good shooter. Uh, let's wake up the gong. Yep, woke up the gong. You just have two magazines. I don't know why I don't have a I don't have a couple extra mags for a M and P. I just don't. Because uh, you know, every now and then we have one in here. I'll reload here. Put some more ammo in the mags, and uh, just so we can uh, shoot a couple more rounds. So yeah, M and P. They make good stuff. Uh, they do, and these are very popular firearms, so it's, it's kind of a matter of whether or not uh, it's the right size for you. If you like uh, a pistol that's uh, the same size essentially as a Glock 19, but has a little bit different feel to it, just a little more weight. But uh, they, they also have a reputation for being reliable, and I think they feed just about anything you stick in them, and uh, accurate, quote unquote, see our video called accuracy if you maybe wonder why i don't talk as much about accuracy uh, when we're just doing polymer pistols uh, that video will tell you why okay so we appreciate y'all watching speaking of that uh, we're glad you come by we enjoy uh, showing some of these firearms off and letting you know what we think about them get this thing loaded up here Appreciate you supporting the people that support us. As uh, we get more support than we deserve, especially from you all. All right. We even appreciate trolls. You know, if weren't for trolls, you just not do anything if you don't have a troll or two or a hater or two, right? You all know that. All right. This is a fun gun. Fun gun. Part of it's a novelty, I guess. Uh, maybe I get a little bit overly exuberant sometimes when we have a firearm on here. Wow, you seem to really like that and you shoot it well, Hickok. Uh, how come you're carrying a stupid Glock still or whatever? You know, some of it is just the novelty of a different firearm. If you really are into firearms and you like firearms, uh, you just like shooting different guns, uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know, just something that is a, is a good shooter and you haven't shot one lately or ever maybe, it's just kind of fun to shoot something different i'm sure you've been to a range and you know the people on the other aisle or table are shooting something and you go over there and you wow this is cool you know just part of it's the novelty in fact you haven't shot it yet and you just enjoy trying it out but uh but it is a nice firearm and let's go over there and pop that square shoot some steel target that red one go I heard one or two hit it yeah let's try to wake up the gong again
<laughs> and to make sure it's gong worthy. All right, we got another mag. We'll spend. Oh, that pumpkin needs another hole. <laughs> and I bet I have another magazine in my mag pouch, my t-shirt pocket. Let's put it back in the holster. All right, that's just a do-all holster there. And let's uh, let's shoot the tree some more. <laughs> a little trouble figuring out where to hold. That's kind of fun. I need to shoot it more. Wish I had about 30 magazines. Uh, I could do more shooting uh, without boring you all by reloading so much. So what have I forgotten to tell you here? Uh, you do get two of these with the firearm. And these are, uh, I don't know, they're some kind of ornament for your finger, I think. No, these go in a magazine. So if you have some 17 round magazine, longer mags for these, because they work just like a Glock, you know. Uh, well, when I say like a Glock, you know, with a Glock, any Glock, you can put the longer mags in it, whether it's a Glock 19, you can put 17 round mags in it or 33 round mags. Well, it's the same with the M&P, okay? And they provide this nifty little sleeve, if I can get it on there right. Now it doesn't go on, it's not designed for this 15 round mag, but uh, you can see if this were a longer magazine, it uh, enables you to, you know, have that flush like that and all that sort of thing, okay? So if you've got a full size, firearm there all right and then one thing i was going to do we'll maybe better do that i've got a couple of mags loaded for the glock and i'll load a couple for this and i'll shoot them side by side okay and uh give you my impressions there and again that's a gen 5 glock now it wouldn't matter i i wasn't sure which one to get out i just wanted the glock 19 and uh just grab that one I actually kind of prefer Gen 4, I think, tell you the truth, but uh, they're basically the same. Gen 4, Gen 5, not a lot of difference. And uh, we'll shoot them both and see if I'm noticing. I haven't really done this yet. See if I notice anything. Anything jumps out at me in terms of a difference in feel. I can say the, the M&P is just a little heavier, two to three ounces. Uh, same capacity, same length, uh, not a lot of difference there. Okay, there we go. We've got ammo now. All right, so let's see. We can safely get them both loaded here. Oop. Let's put the uh, M&P mag in the M&P, not the Glock mag. I don't really need to have hot. I guess it's that critical, but mag in that one. And the mag and the Glock. Well, neither one will be hot. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe I'll just shoot Cowboys some of the bigger stuff down there and get a feel for it. Uh, I'll start with, well, I think I'll just take a few shots. Now, again, I might lay, uh, lay them down there hot. I'll make sure they're pointed in that direction into the hillside just so I can pick it back up. I think I'll shoot about half the magazine and then, uh, you know, alternate a little bit let's well let's just continue with this I'll shoot five or six with this okay let me grab a Glock okay we grab the M&P I don't notice a lot of difference. Do I have two more mags? Did not, yeah. Let me load this again. I, I couldn't tell a lot of difference. The biggest, the difference is just in the feel and the grip, you know, really. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna shoot the whole magazine this time. Uh, so anyway, as you can guess, I mean, nothing jumped out too dramatically or I would have uh, sensed it, other than just the feel of it. Uh, with that big palm swell kind of thing on the M&P, that feels different. Uh, going back and forth but uh 
that was the most noticeable thing. I don't notice a lot of difference, I don't think, in recoil. I may just empty the entire mag this time, get a better feel. All right. So we got the MP and uh, I don't know, I'll take a couple of shots on something, then I'm just going to empty the mag, finish emptying it on something here. Uh, John, <laughs> I I want to say the MP doesn't jump around quite as much, but I, I don't know. I, I can't tell a lot of difference, okay? And the slide is heavier, it, it shouldn't, but I, I'm not sure it does. I, they, they both are, are very, very, very similar. So I don't notice anything dramatic other than just the feel of the grip is, 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 is different. Uh, you know, uh, like I say, I really like the way that MP locks in. It, it feels really good in that sense. So uh, I'm going to say it's a toss up. Uh, you would probably have a preference, definitely. Uh, and I guess I, I don't know. You know, I've got so much history with the Glock, you know, I'm probably going to prefer it. But uh, they both feel great. It, it's a firearm that, that you would you would like. And if you're, again, if you're looking for a firearm in this size category in a 9 or a 40 or a 45, I think this is. Uh, and I don't know if this compact yet is available in, in 40. It will be if it's not, uh, and maybe in 45 at some point. But uh, uh, if you're looking for a pistol in this size range, uh, you know, it's one you want to look at, definitely. Okay, get a feel. And, and this is a, such a popular line of pistols, I'm sure in most of your rental ranges, it's going to be available too. All right, so that's the beauty of it. Uh, you can go shoot the thing, rent it. It's worth spending the money. I mean, right, shooting is always worth spending the money, right? Go and have some fun at the range. But try it out and see what you think. Try it, try a Glock, try, try everything else, CZ. Uh, lots of good choices now in this range. As I have come clean and confessed, you know, in several videos, one of the reasons I stick with Glock is, is uh, they pay me. That's a joke. No, one reason I stick with Glock is it, it would, uh, now I could change, but it would take something pretty dramatic to get me out of it because I've got so many and I've got so many magazines and history with it and parts and everything else. So uh, I'm not gonna, just gonna change willy nilly because hey, I kind of like this too. You know, make a major switch over. Like I might've done back in my twenties, you know, as we all do when we're younger, we're always trading and getting into different firearms and whatever, but, uh, but, so I'm trying to be honest with you, uh, and it's hard for me to be honest. Uh, so if you're looking for a pistol in this category, look at this one. It, 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 you might like it much better than the Glock or better than CZ or some of the others, the Ruger or whatever. So I would take a look at it. So uh, I kind of pointed out what I see as a negative or positive. The serrations are nice back here. Uh, up here, they're kind of weird. Uh, oh, like that. Uh, I, they're basically unusable, I think. And I just pinched myself trying to use them. Uh, but I never use the front serrations anyway. It's very, very rare. So I wouldn't be too impressed because they tried to give you some serrations right there. And of course, you know, they break down. You, you know, M&P. Look at the other video. And, uh, you know, same, same operation. I'll put a link in the description of the other 2.0 M&P. And this is just a smaller version, more convenient version of, of that. And part of the reason that this is possibly the most popular carry gun in the country, it's not necessarily the fact that the Glock is the ultimate pistol. You know, we all know that's not necessarily the case, uh, but it is a really a good one. And it's the perfect size you know it's not busy you don't have lots of big controls on it and it's a minimalist if you like the minimalist approach to a firearm you know it it, it does that okay so it but that's not to say there's not a lot of other really good firearms and now there are so many that are either so close to it or they match it in those features that seem to be what people want okay a lot of people criticize glock for not innovating 
innovating. Everybody else is trying to innovate into that, it looks like, and it would be a smart move, just like this pistol. It's directly targeted, as others have been, to the Glock 19. It's about the same size and all that kind of thing. So the innovation uh, largely is, let's see if we can match the Glock 19. Okay, now, that may be a little bit of a, a stretch, you know, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, what is it going to do? Make it run off electronic battery or something? I mean, this is, this is kind of what we want. A pistol that's the right size, it's not too big, and it's easy to manipulate and use and shoot well, and that, that's it. It's all we want. So lots of companies are, uh, are, are achieving that now, and I'd say that's, that's one of them. Take a look at it. If uh, you're interested in a pistol like this and this size, you would probably like it. You'd probably shoot it well with the different grip that you can put on there you would find one that you like if you've got smaller hands than i have there might be a couple of you that have smaller hands than i have out there uh you would probably prefer the grip that comes on at medium or even small and the fact that the trigger breaks back here a little too close to the frame for me uh it's got a nice reset the fact that it breaks back there things that john and i don't like you might absolutely love because it might be just perfect for you because again most of you probably don't have a hand, you know, like I do or John has. So anyway, the M&P2 Compact, uh, nice choice. I'd take a look at it if you're looking for a, a new pistol. Life is good. Oh man, you guys watched that whole video? Well, not one to judge, but while you're here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program. They offer hands-on experience. They also accept GI Bill. You can get certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check them out when you get a chance over at sdi.edu. Also, uh, some of the new targets you may have noticed on our range are from shootsomesteel.com. So maybe give their website a look. And also um, the vault safe that you might have seen on our shooting table. You can check those out at vault Also, don't forget to check out our website, uh, hickok45.com. You can find all of our links to the different uh, social media sites that you can find us on, like full30.com, um, the real Hickok45 on Twitter, I mean on uh, Instagram, Hickok45 on Twitter, uh, Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also the Hickok45 and Sun YouTube channel. Um, so just go to the website and you'll find most of that stuff and our t-shirts, of course. Um, you can find our, all of our merchandise for sale there on Hickok45.com. And man, I guess you guys are gonna have to find something else to watch on YouTube because that's it. That's all I have to say. Appreciate it.